and welcome back to the Amateur Radio Technician License Course. You know, Amateur Radio is more than just an awesome hobby. Um, it brings a personal element to electronics and the art of communication. Uh, by using your equipment daily to talk to someone either across town or perhaps around the world, you're creating skills that can actually save lives in your, your community or in other parts of the world. Um, it could be before, during, after a disaster or, or some type of catastrophe. You know, we, we can't change such events from occurring, but we can improve the outcome and contribute to the recovery process. So, are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This is Lesson 4. I'm Gary Stevens, uh, KE2GS. I'll be your instructor. We're going to be talking about uh, amateur radio practices and station setup. Uh, there are two exam questions out of these two groups. This will cover connecting microphones, reducing unwanted emissions, uh, power source, uh, connections to computers, uh, RF grounding, connecting digital equipment, and connecting an SWR meter. I get it. For some of us, it's uh, just reading the manual can just get in the way of having fun. Uh, when it comes to connecting your transceiver to a power source, however, I urge you not to take shortcuts. Improper wiring can be costly in time and money. Cutting corners can even create a fire hazard. When using a power supply, make sure it can supply the current needed uh, full power output of your transceiver and make sure that it is properly regulated and designed to dissipate heat well. For the exam, no, the following must be considered to determine the minimum current capacity needed for a transceiver's power supply. Efficiency of the transmitter at full power output, receiver and control circuit power, and power supply regulation and heat dissipation. Computers are useful for amateur radio in many ways. Uh, everything from logging contacts, uh, saving your contact information, uh, station logs, um, sending and receiving uh, Morse code. Uh, you can also use it to generate and decode digital signals. Uh, what you're looking at on the screen is a software defined radio uh, it's GQRX. It's available on many systems. Um, it's uh, mainly for just receive uh, only, uh, but it gives you an idea of what uh, it's capable of doing. Um, there are many other software packages that actually control radios as well. This is a program called FL Digi. Uh, it allows you to transmit or send uh, CW uh, via your sound card. Uh, it also allows you to send uh, packets. Uh, you can uh, uh, just type the message that you want to send in and it will send it uh, either in Morse code or in packet. And it will uh, receive and uh, decode the information as well. So it's uh, pretty nifty and it kind of gives you an idea that you could do. For the exam, you need to know the following reasons that a computer can be used as part of an amateur radio station. For logging contacts and contact information, for sending and receiving CW or Morse code, and generated and decoding digital signals. When connecting uh, your transceiver either to the battery in your car or to a power supply, you need to uh, make sure that you have an ample gauge uh, or the right gauge wire that can handle the current and you also want to keep the leads as short as possible and that uh, helps uh, with the current uh, carrying capability. Uh, for the exam, know that to avoid uh, voltage falling below the, uh, that needed uh, for proper operation, uh, the wiring between the power source and the radio should be heavy gauge wire and be kept as short as possible. 
Well, for the exam, you need to know that the microphone or line input of the computer sound card port is connected to a transceiver's headphone or speaker output for operation or operating uh, digital modes. I would like to tell you that I would advise that you use some type of interface or sound card interface, even if uh, it's just a couple of transformers, uh, one to one 600 ohm transformers, uh, which are typically used for audio use. Uh, because uh, improper wiring or a short could either damage your computer or your radio or both. So just uh, be forewarned. SWR is an acronym for standing wave ratio. An SWR meter simply measures how well a transceiver is matched or balanced with a load, which is typically an antenna. Uh, connecting the meter is always in series in that the output of the transceiver goes to the input of the meter and the output of the meter goes to the antenna feed line. For the exam, know that the proper location for an external SWR meter is in series with the feed line between the transmitter and the antenna. One common type of uh, radio computer interface is called a TNC, which stands for Terminal Node Controller. Many radios have a special connection cable available to interconnect with a TNC. Uh, as mentioned in a previous slide, there's also a sound card interface that will work in lieu of a TNC. Cables uh, facilitate the uh, interconnection of uh, ground, receive, and transmit audio and push to talk signals. For the test, know that uh, the receive audio, transmit audio, and push to talk connections might be used between a voice transceiver and a computer for digital operation. Here is an example of a sound card interface that offers uh, electrical isolation between the computer and the transceiver. Uh, for examination purposes, understand that when conducting digital communications, the sound card provides audio to the radio's microphone input and converts the receive audio to digital form. For the exam, you also need to know that a flat strap conductor provides the lowest impedance to RF signals. With DC signals, uh, electrons flow through the entire conductor. With AC and RF signals, however, electrons uh, flow more towards the surface of the conductor. And this is particularly true for the higher frequencies. Uh, the phenomena is called the skin effect. A ferrite choke is a passive electronic component that suppresses uh, high frequency noise in uh, electronic circuits. Uh, for the exam, no, you could use a ferrite choke to cure distorted audio caused by RF current on the shield of a microphone cable. There are many sources of RFI, radio frequency interference, but the most noted ones are motors, generators, and alternators. Uh, for the test, you should know the alternator is a source of a high-pitched whine that varies with engine speed in a mobile transceiver's receive audio. By connecting both power leads of the mobile transceiver directly to the battery, you can eliminate most interference from the vehicle itself. You should also put in-line fuses uh, near each battery terminal connection to reduce uh, fire hazard and equipment damage. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that the negative return connection of a mobile transceiver's power cable should be connected at the battery or engine block ground strap. Now we're going to discuss uh, operating controls, in particular uh, tuning, use of filters, squelch function, AGC or automatic gain control, transceiver operations, and memory channels. You need to know for the exam if a transmitter is operated with the microphone gain set too high, the output signal might become distorted, like in the previous example. We are all familiar with uh, how to tune a radio with the tuning knob or VFO knob. But you can also tune a radio uh, with a keypad. The 
For the exam, know that the keypad or the VFO knob can be used to enter the operating frequency on a modern transceiver. Background noise can be annoying, but fortunately there is a squelch control to mute it. For the exam, know that the purpose of the squelch control on a receiver is to mute the receiver output noise when no signal is being received. Most modern transceivers uh, have memory channels. <clears throat> In a memory location, you can store frequency, offsets, access tone, and a few other parameters. Uh, they can either be accessed directly, or you can scan them, uh, much like uh, uh, the more familiar scanners. Uh, for the exam, remember that a way to enable quick access to a favorite frequency on your transceiver is to store the frequency in a memory channel. Noise blanker is a circuit used to reduce the effect of impulse type signals uh, that are generated from lightning, gasoline engines, and DC motors. Uh, for the exam, it would be to your best interest to know if you turn on a noise blanker, it would reduce ignition interference to a receiver. RIT or receiver incremental tuning in is the ability to shift the receiver's frequency uh, in one direction or another away from uh, the intended frequency uh, by just a small amount. Uh, sometimes this helps in uh, being able to uh, understand what a person is saying. You should know that a receiver writ or a clarifier could be used if the voice pitch of a single sideband signal seems too high or too low. You also need to know that the term uh, RIT means receiver incremental tuning. By selecting the proper mode on your transceiver, you're changing the receiver bandwidth uh, and filtering out most of the unwanted noise. For the exam, know that the advantage of having multiple received bandwidth choices on a multi-mode transceiver uh, is, is that it uh, permits noise or interference reduction by selecting a bandwidth matching the mode. Receiver filters are based on the mode of operation. <clears throat> a phone or voice filter is a 24 100 hertz uh, filter which passes uh, frequencies that are in our range of hearing. Know that at 2400 hertz uh, is the appropriate receiver filter bandwidth uh, for minimizing noise and interference for a single sideband reception. Also know 500 hertz is the appropriate uh, receiver filter bandwidth for minimizing noise and interference for CW or Morse code reception. Automatic Gain Controller AGC is a closed loop feedback uh, regulating circuit. Uh, the purpose is just to control the signal amplitude at its output despite any variations uh, in the input signal. For the exam, know the function of automatic gain control or AGC is to keep the received audio relatively constant. Again, you should know uh, a noise blinker could be used to remove power line noise or ignition noise. If your transceiver has a uh, memory, it probably has a scan function that allows you to uh, scan through different different frequencies until we find one that's in use. So the last thing you need to know in this section is a use for a scanning function on an FM transceiver is to scan through a range of frequencies to check for activity. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. If you've already purchased uh, equipment, uh, be sure to read the manual or ask a local amateur operator uh, more about its operation if you're not sure about uh, uh, what you're doing. Um, you don't have to buy the equipment yet. Uh, if you haven't, no worries. There's plenty of time to do that later. 
Uh, a lot of people wait till they get their license before they actually purchase equipment. But uh, you know, some people are really eager and and like to have it before because it gives them incentive to get their license. Um, if you like this series, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, never stop learning. Thank you.